Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about comparing these two 4 by NAS. I want to look at the brand new Synology 420 Plus and how it compares with the brand new QNAP TS453D. Two NASes that have arrived in summer 2020. Both of them arriving at a fairly substantial price tag for a number of home users but definitely something in the small medium business area there's about 120 130 pounds between them without the that and both of these two represent very very high quality products from both of their respective brands but which one deserves your data we're going to talk about the hardware more than anything but before we go any further let's talk about the software and ultimately what have these two NASs got in common so both of them arrived with their own dedicated software in the form of DSM and QTS. Both of them arrived with three years of manufacturer's warranty. Both of them arrived with support of Plex Media Server. Both of them arrived with a huge amount of support for their own first party software for photos, music and video. Both with dedicated video uh, tools that can scrape metadata from the internet for trailers, reviews, thumbnails, actors, descriptions and more. So you don't have to just rely on Plex Media Server and their subscription service. You can get it included in your purchase and that includes the 4K and 1080p transcoding. They both arrive with um, surveillance platforms in the form of Surveillance Station and QVR Pro, Surveillance Station and um, USB to um, QCam, the, the webcam app. They both arrive with a multi-tiered backup tool um, and synchronization tool in the form of Hybrid Backup Sync 3 and Hyper Backup that allow you to create a one portal, multi-schedule, multi-platform backup strategy covering USB, cloud, NAS and more and via R-Sync, Mirror and more. Both of them arrive with support of iTunes, DLNA media servers and a myriad of tools internally for handling your data, particularly business users who want to be dealing with docs, spreadsheets and more with the Synology arriving with Synology Office as well as Synology Chat and the QNAP arriving with support of things like Skype and the likes of Office 365 plugins for its own file manager. So all of that is included uh, to a greater or lesser degree inside your NAS. So both of them are going to arrive with a great amount of support for dealing with your files in both a third and third part, uh, first and third party environment. But that's where things start to change. Both of these devices are very representative of their respective companies, and therefore both have a very different attitude to how you the best way to interact with your data. Now, the Synology is a little bit more closed as a system. I have compared it many times in the past, but the Synology is more like console gaming. It's a closed system. You can't update it in as many ways in terms of hardware, but you are getting a very stable platform that's incredibly user-friendly. It hides a lot of the more difficult decisions in the background, or you have to dig a few layers to get to them, and it does this to give you the most user-friendly, easiest graphical, use, graphical user interface and platform that you're gonna find in NAS. Yes, because of that, more technologically advanced users or those that have had NASs in the past, or even third-party servers from the likes of HP or Netgear, might find the Synology platform a bit closed. But it does that to keep it simple and to make sure everyone has a balanced and easy user-friendly experience. They can do technical. It can do a lot of technical things. But if you don't know what you're doing, the Synology will be or hold your hand a lot more. Whereas the QNAP is a little bit more technical, and only a little, but it does that by not hiding the tough decisions. It will present you a decision uh, or a choice. It will tell you the impact of those choices. It will hold your hand, but it won't make a lot of the decisions for you. There's a lot of defaults, but when setting up your device for the first time, you can create a genuinely bespoke and customizable storage platform with a QNAP NAS, and the 453D is a great example of that. It's worth highlighting though that not everyone's the same and not everyone wants to go into this device to tinker all the time. You might want to set up and forget. And in that case, you might find the QNAP a little bit intimidating. That's why I always compare them to PC gaming. It's far more customizable. You can change a lot of the set values and improve your performance in the areas that matter the most. Same thing goes for your folder structure. The Synology in the number of their applications will insist that you choose preset folders for your data. The reason being, that it allows easier caching and indexing of those applications and it's more streamlined and therefore results in better performance. The QNAP on the other hand will allow you to customize and you to choose where you want your data to live for a number of apps. And it does this with Multimedia Console, their tool 
that allows you to create a far more bespoke network and storage environment of where your data lives and where you want the applications and tools to seek that information. So again, lots of advantages there. The same goes for virtualization. The Synology platform supports virtualization in a number of ways and although the hardware architecture of this device is slightly less than you might like for a VM, it still supports the app. But the virtualization tool isn't as open as the QNAP's virtualization station. And Synology's Virtual Machine Manager, in conjunction with Docker, does support a number of different uh, containers and images for virtual environments, but not as many as the QNAP. With the QNAP arriving with Container Station, Virtualization Station, and Linux Station, where you can create a Linux Ubuntu uh, version 18 VM in about seven clicks. On top of that, you can even download a Windows VM directly from the app onto the device within two clicks and have a Windows VM up and running in minutes. But it does that by asking you to set it up, you know, and go through the configuration options, things that the Synology would not so much hide away, but would be worried that the, uh, their audience might be a little bit intimidated by that. You can do those things, but not in a way that PC users would think is very um, user friendly because they would be like, right, I want to go for the image, I want to assign this, 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 but the Synology kind of tries to make things easy, and in that way can sometimes come across as too easy, and therefore streamlined, and they're too streamlined, and you can't configure the options. It really comes down to you, the user, and how you interact with it. And that goes even further in a lot of the things these devices can do. With the surveillance platform, there's one surveillance software on the Synology, there's three on the QNAP. None of those three are as good as surveillance station, but Surveillance Station has two camera licenses. QVR Pro on the QNAP, which is still pretty close, it's not quite as good, but it's really close, has eight camera licenses. With the QNAP, you have more third-party tool support, and that supports things like Office 365, which if you're used to using your third-party software, you're gonna see the benefit of that. Whereas the Synology, it has great software included in Synology Chat, Synology Drive, Synology Mail, Synology Calendar, Synology Office, all those collaboration tools, which are great, which will help you if you're gonna move away from cloud services, certainly. But they're still not as good to a number of you, or at least good enough, that you're gonna drop Office 365 or Google Docs or something right away. Now, in terms of hardware architecture between these two, there's a lot of difference, again, the Synology arrives with the dual-core Intel J4025, a dual-core processor that also arrived with 2 gig of DDR4 memory. That CPU is 2.0 to 2.9 gigahertz frequency, and it supports 4K and 1080p transcoding, along with AES NI encryption. The QNAP, on the other hand, arrives with a 4-core CPU, same family, but the 4125, which for each of those cores is 2.0 to 2.7 gigahertz. It also arrives with four gig of DDR4 memory. The Synology upgrade to six gig maximum, the QNAP eight. So between the two of them, internal hardware does seemingly seem better on the QNAP, but remember that the Synology arrives with a far more intelligent caching system built in. On top of that, it also has two SSD NVMe base in the byte base that will vastly improve your internal performance when utilizing this device all the time. That internal performance improvement cannot be understated. Yes, you are bottlenecked by one GBE, but the internal performance benefits of M2 NVMe SSDs in the base of this shouldn't be overstated. It is very useful whether you're a business user, multimedia user, VM user, surveillance user or more, and it does bring a lot to the party. Now the QNAP doesn't have the M2 NVMe bays in the base, but what it does have is a myriad of ports and connections on the rear and an upgrade and an, an upgradability that Synology just doesn't have. It has those USB 2 ports and USB 3 ports, so it has five in total, but it also has 2.5 GBE, not one GBE. So each one of those ports on their own give a higher frequency and speed and bandwidth availability than either of those 1 GBE ports. This, with link aggregation, can get up to 2 gigabit Ethernet, so 200 megs or so. This, with link aggregation, will give you 5 gigabit Ethernet, or 500 megs, that will be shared out with your connected network environment. On top of that, the QNAP has HDMI out for a standalone utilization, where you can use a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse, standalone surveillance station, standalone PC, standalone Plex or Kodi, these are options that are open to you with this device. 
Also, PCIe upgradability. PCIe Gen 2 times 2 allowing up to 1,000 megs connectivity mean that you can add SSD caching bays with a PCIe card. You can add 10 gigabit Ethernet for even further upgradable network connections. You can even add a 5 GBE to USB adapter on this device to add another 5 gigabit Ethernet connection. These are upgrades that are just not available on the Synology. And I haven't even mentioned this yet, the QNAP can be expanded with expansion devices in the TR and TL series that will add two, four, six, eight bays, or even 12 bays of storage extra in this product's lifespan, whereas the Synology can't be expanded in its storage. It has SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID, and it has support of BTRFS as a file system. It has a lot going for it of its internal operation speed and as a contained device. But there's no avoiding that the Synology from a hardware stance has a lower glass ceiling and lower upgradability than the QNAP overall within its product lifespan. Whether you're going to take advantage of that, who knows? It might differ wildly. But there's no avoiding the hardware distinction between them. And remember that price difference was about 120 to 130 quid. So not actually that much difference in terms of storage, um, in terms of price per storage more like. Now, the software... I still think the software on the Synology is on the whole better, but it all depends if you're going to use that software. They've both got three years of warranty. They've both got support of 16 TB Seagate Ironwolf drives, which means they can both support up to 64 terabytes of storage pre-RAID. But at the same time, you're going to have that storage volume. Fantastic, huge amount of storage there in your pool to play with. But in terms of hardware and network upgrades, the Synology already arrives with a bottleneck in a number of ways that you may have difficulty overcoming. But always remember, if you're not going to use a lot of this extra hardware, why pay extra for it? This can still do an exceptional job in multimedia, in business and more. And those applications are well worth part of the budget that goes towards them. And if you are new to NAS or you're buying your first network attached storage server, or if you're a home prosumer, or a low-end business user that's just trying to make the jump from um, uh, Google Drive and Dropbox, the Synology DS420 is a great NAS. But if you're looking for more longevity, if you're looking for upgradability and customization, if you are a bit more technologically um, advanced, or this is not your first NAS, QNAP TS453D is a great choice between these two. I hope I've helped. Remember, this does come down to you and how you use your data. That's going to be the most important choice here because you want to buy something that you want and can use. If you have enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. If you want to learn more specifically about these two, go to the links in the description where we break down and compare all of the different kinds of NAS right now in summer 2020. I'll see you next time.